Good evening, my friends. This is Daryl Kirky, and I am making a, a life wisdoms, understanding, and manifestations video. And uh, I have my friend with me. He's a messenger. We call him the messenger, a man with a very, very high intelligence uh, that should have been professor of quantum physics and uh, he's been my mate all my life he's, we both had, have had angel experiences near death experiences and we've both touched the light so we, we, we talk about a lot of stuff that is meaningful and uplifting and uh, hopefully it will inspire others to come on board because life can be very short and we're not taking anything with us except what's in our heart okay not what's in our head so much because that's limited. And a lot of people are trying to manifest blessings in their life and they're still going through the, through the head because the soul is made up of mind, intellect, will, emotions, and ego. And there's the higher level of the soul and it's miraculous in itself, but it's not what Jesus did. He was the spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in one. And when he manifested, it was all done in the Spirit. And Jesus said that we are going to do more than he did. I know that sounds impossible, but that's what Jesus actually said and hasn't been done yet. Sometime in the future, there are going to be supernatural events that have never been done before, except when Christ was here and time of Moses and the world has not seen that's it what one man Thank walking you, in the power of God there you can go. do yeah, yeah. and uh, let alone the two witnesses they will be visiting as well and some people say it's just two nations coming together at war or something it's ridiculous it's it says two witnesses will be breathing fire out of their mouths protecting uh, the Christians and the saints of the most high God and they'll have fire all around them and, and this, this this amazing things are going to start happening and we're going to need these two witnesses because we've got this alien thing going on which is about to make an announcement to the world through some uh again quantum physics mathematics uh, with a number code to understand their language and they, they want to make the announcement i've seen this on on the youtubes and doc documentaries that we are from them we're descents. And if we are descents from the aliens, then who made the aliens? And a lot of religions are going to crumble and um, they're going to uh, lose their faith in, in God and, and start believing they come from aliens. Imagine little kids running around. Hey, uh, the aliens, that's, that's my God. <laughs> no more church, no more programs, no more activities. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, brothers and sisters, do not throw Jesus Christ out with the dirty, filthy, religious bath water, right? Religion is filled with deceptions. And the whole alien thing is also deceptive, right? Two wrongs don't make a right. They're both messed up. The gospel of grace that Paul was commissioned to preach is given to us, the Gentiles, in these last days. We don't need any more. We've got the fullness of or the sufficiency of this grace to be saved. First Corinthians chapter one, verse fifteen and not, uh, sorry, chapter fifteen verses one to four. Jesus died. Jesus was buried. Jesus was uh, arose from the dead after after three days, accordingly to the scriptures. And to keep this in memory, and ye shall have eternal life. Okay, nothing about obedience, keeping laws and commandments, because we're not under the law. Of course, if you love the Lord. You're going to keep the commandments, but you're not going to do it in your soul, fallen state of the body of Adam and Eve. You, you, you're going to go into spirit, into the perfection of Christ's righteousness. And he does the obedience. He does the repenting. He does everything. The whole works of the Holy Spirit comes through the, through the spirit. Miracles are going to happen. We don't have to beat ourselves up sleeping on a bed of nails or a, um, what's the other? Uh, whipping ourselves with, with a whip. That's like the Catholic monks went through and all that, you know? We can avoid all that. Yes, we can. We have a contrite, broken heart when we have a conviction we've done the wrong thing and we immediately choose to repent 
by changing our minds. Okay, we're not repenting of sins. The Bible doesn't mention anything about that because in the body of soul, fallen body of Adam, we cannot. We can try, but there's no guarantee. You know, I, I feel it's a very sad situation. So many people beating themselves up with fear, shame, and guilt, trying to overcome their filthy, rotten sins. And we're all sinners, and there's not one probable servant at the end of the day. Not a pope, not a prophet. We're all sinners, and yet they claim all, you know, righteousness, anointed. You know, you don't mess with the anointed ones, and they're untouchable, right? And as my mate said about the uh, Indian gurus, the enlightened ones, yet they walk past the wounded man in the street, or somebody as poor as anything, and just walk on by. Like the, uh, the parable where Jesus said the Good Samaritan was the greater example, while the Levite priest, which is, the, of course, the Mormon restoration of that, they, they claim, uh, and, the, and the rabbi walked on past to, to get to the Holy Temple, busy, 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 and ignored the wounded man in the street. Yet the Good Samaritan stopped to help. That's the gospel of grace. That's the love and mercy coming forth through the fruits, right? When you don't stop and help a wounded man, and no matter how enlightened or anointed or holy you think you are, right? <laughs> it's an hypocrisy, right? You're just feeding your own nest, you know, prophets, apostles, popes. And what do they do for the fatherless, the widows, the, the widows, the fatherless, the orphans? Not much at all. Can you imagine a woman just lost her husband going to a into a church, especially a Mormon church or a, or whatever religious works based church, and ask for a check to take care of her, you know, her kids, and she's out of work, she's lost her husband, she's a widow. Do you think they're going to write out a check, maybe one off, or maybe try and tell her to get a job while she's got kids? You know, they've got plenty of money these mega churches. Why don't they help the widows and the poor? As my mate says, uh, what do you say, uh, Zach? Uh, no sign of God? What was that? Plenty, plenty of religion, but no sign of God. You got a comment on that? A world full of religion and no sign of God. There you go. You want to repeat that, mate? Say that again for the viewers. A world full of religion and no sign of God. There you go. It's called irony. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But this is this is about life, wisdoms, manifestations, uh, understanding. Okay, and it is when you when you study the scriptures, the Bible, right? You've got to take the footprints out of it, the red letters that Jesus Christ yeah, actually spoke. Actually, it's not irony; it's a paradox. Right. Okay. So we take the wisdoms and the understandings. The fruits of the Spirit. We take that from the Bible. We don't take literally every little letter because if we did, especially the Old Testament, stone your children to death because they're disobedient. Oh, um, and all that racism in the, in the, the Bible. Oh, look, that was the old law. Jesus has fulfilled the law. Okay, there's the law of love, or you could call it the spirit of love, all right? So if, if you've got the love from the, from the, in the Spirit, in Christ's righteousness, you know, you're keeping the commandment because Jesus is actually empowering you through the Holy Spirit. You, you're able to keep all those commandments. You're not keeping it in yourself or your own righteousness. It's just nothing but filthy rags. And that's what these religious people are doing. They're trying to earn their way to heaven by overcoming in the fallen body of Adam and Eve. And as in my ex- Mormon church, I'm an ex-Mormon, I'm a pro-Mormon, I'm not an anti-Mormon, I've got respect for making bad people good and good people better, but it doesn't mean they're saved, they're just trying to be better people. They put the robes on of Adam and Eve and go through the veil, knock at the veil to try and get to heaven, that's their sort of ritual. They're always trying to stay in the fallen body of Adam and Eve, and they don't claim that Adam and Eve sinned, it was a transgression. It doesn't make any difference. They put lamb skins on, they got rid of the fig leaf, went out and thorns and thistles into the wilderness, met Jesus in the desert, so to speak, metaphorically, put on the lamb skin or the animal skin, and they found Christ in the mist. Just like the prodigal son went out and spent all the inheritance money, uh, sinned and everything, and then he found Christ. And then this brother who was just squeaky clean, perfect, like some of these Mormons, just squeaky clean, they never step out of their comfort zone, 
He was jealous. He couldn't understand why his brother was getting the blessing of his father. The prodigal son. That's like coming out of the fallen body of Adam and Eve, get rid of the fig leaf. Okay, it was all holy at the time under the covenant, but then, it, then they were cast out and they had to find their own way back to Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ. So that's what it's all about. It's a personal journey and a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. What can religion do? By putting you back under the bondage of the law. They're putting you back under that which Paul commissioned to preach the grace to take us out of that. And all these people that think that Paul was a false apostle and we should still be under the law and that he sh he, half the New Testament written by Paul shouldn't even be there. How ridiculous is that? That would mean, means that Jesus died on the cross for nothing. He died to fulfill the law so we could be set free. Know the truth and the truth shall set you free, brothers and sisters. So come out of the body of Adam and Eve. Come out of the bondage of the law of religion. Right? Where two or more gather. The power is the, of Christ is, 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 is in the mist, okay? And of course, if the church grows, that's great. But when it comes to accumulating tithes and look, see, even tithes and offerings, it was a Jewish thing. It was, it was commanded for the Jews to pay the Levite priests in the temple who were poor without land and property so they could do the ministry of the Lord's work in those temples at the time, which was no more than animal sacrifice a few times a year. I mean, the priests went in once a year to the Holy of Holies. Because the Mormon Latter Day Saints, they're going in there every week. And there's hundreds of thousands of priests. And the Bible says there is no high priest after Jesus Christ. So, you know, you draw your own conclusions. It's like robbing God of the priesthood. Jesus is it. And who come after Jesus Christ? Right? The high priest, the royal priesthood for all saved Christians. I'm talking about what came after Jesus Christ. Paul came before Jesus Christ, but his dispensation has been carried through the times right up to today, us Gentiles. Of course, the Latter-day Saint Church replaced Paul's dispensation, put Joseph Smith's dispensation there. Replaced it. Everyone is, other one is there, Abraham right up. That's a, that's a mockery. The most important dispensation of all times removed to get us under the bondage of the law again. Just so they could become gods, exaltation into the highest heaven, which the Bible hardly mentions. It, it, you know, there's some reference of some level of where we end up, but it doesn't talk about becoming gods or or God was once a man, Jesus our brother. Even in their own book, it says Jesus is the eternal God. There, there is none formed before and after him. And the Bible says the same thing. So what do they call him brother for? And then put Allah above him, who's got a body of flesh and bone. Jesus has got a body of flesh and bone. And then they say the Holy Ghost is yet to get a body of flesh and bone. Two, three separate beings. Ah, oh, that is not even biblical. It's not even in the Book of Mormon, which is supposed to be the lost book. The, the, the stick of Joseph, which the Bible supposedly foretold, the, book, the stick of Judah, which is the Bible. Historians would agree with me on that. And the stick of Joseph is a lost book. They don't know what it is, but it's scattered. One of the tribes scattered. So the Mormons claim that is the tribe and that priesthood belongs to that tribe. And then you've got the gospel of grace and you've got the gospel of exaltation. And then you become, have the fullness of the gospel, two, two gospel in one. But, uh, but uh, Galateans, I can never say that. Galatians says in chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, anyone who adds, or rather uh, anyone accepts another gospel, and not even accept Paul coming back as an, as an angel preaching another gospel, he said. Let that man be accursed. So, okay, the stick of Joseph is mentioned in, in, in the Bible. Um, okay, if that is true, if it's true, why is Jesus our brother? Why uh, is God a man, once a man evolved, when, the, when it says it, it was, it, there was no God formed before? See, it's a contradiction. I would say, okay, stick of Joseph. That's amazing. They come together, become one, one gospel, so it's not another gospel, not another angel. But then they, they start messing around with it. And the, and the members of the church are following the prophet, whatever comes out of their mouth. And that changes over time. One prophet, Brigham Young, after Joseph Smith, said that God was, Adam was God the Father. And then Spencer Kimball in 1976 said, oh, no way. That's nonsense. But people went along with that for 10 years. It's a cult. It has to be. How would anyone in their right mind 
follow 10 years a prophet who's telling you that Adam is God, the Adam God theory, and then change it. The blacks are not allowed to have the priesthood. And then in 1978, it gets changed. Oh, yeah, they can have the priesthood now. And they can have exaltation and eternal marriage. And yet, that, yeah, Brigham Young said, if anyone, any white bugger marries a black man, let him be struck dead on the spot. Or actually, he said he, they would be struck dead on the spot, and this will always be so. What a blasphemy. What a thing to say. And that got changed. Of course, the, the prophet today, beautiful man, Nelson, met him, talked to him and everything. Right? He's a lovely man. And he go, he go, he's gone against it. He, he said, no, nah, that's nonsense. Just like President Kimball said nonsense uh, as well. Wow. Okay. So it's a changing changing thing, like the sands on the sea, uh, what do you call it? The house built upon sand. God is supposed to be unchangeable. Okay. It's great that they're starting to realize, the, you know, the, the, the judgments. Let's see, let, it's, uh, leading people to, to suicide. Right? So that's what religion does. And they don't give accountability to that. Just wipe, sweep it under the carpet. So, you know, this, this, this video is supposed to be um, on, on life, wisdoms, understandings, and manifestations. Now, my messenger friend here, he's written two books yet to be published. All right? I'll let him talk about that sometime in the future. He's got a lot to say, but he's a bit camera shy. And we'll put a camera on him, he's going to quieten down. Because we're musicians, we, 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 we write songs and we've done a lot of things together. But give him a large crowd of people and he, you know, his brilliance as a, as a musician may, may stumble because he's not, a, he's not an egotist. He doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't want all that recognition and stuff. He just wants respect and dignity and, and to use his talent and to glorify the Lord too. He's also got a quantum physics dream to build machines and um, do a lot of great things, but he he probably needs a billion dollars. Let's manifest a billion dollars. But see, you got to believe what you think you deserve. And if you just think, you de see, I I personally be happy with a few million dollars. I'd be helping people, but a billion dollars. And anyway, those people in the third world countries, see, they try that. They try that. You don't see too many people in the third world countries manifesting six million dollar houses and. It all seems to happen in the Western world. Why don't we go for a million instead of a billion, eh? Yeah, yeah. It's more of a oh, bite-sized piece. Even a hundred thousand. So when I buy the lot... Uh, hey, no, no. A million's good. A million's good, yeah. yeah. let's go for the million. Yeah, but I'm saying, when you buy the lot, I get a syndicate, right? Share 50 games. I don't care about winning $20 million. I just I'll be happy to have $1 million. Yeah. Right? And people yeah. pay... Nice starter. Well, people paying 50 bucks for 50 games or whatever, how much it is. And you pay 10 bucks for 50 games um, when you're sharing that money out with 15 other people. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's abundance. But we, I'm not really into abundance so much. I'm happy. I've got my house. I've got, I've got everything I want. I'm comfortable. All right? And I just want to do the Lord's work. All right? I want to love people. I want to help people. Uh, I will not take people to my home who are criminal, that, uh, that are full of hatred, spite, negativity. They won't come into my house. I'll love them from a distance. And I'll put out that radio wave vibration. And normally, if you're in the spirit, they're not likely to attack you unless it's God's will. And, and if your time's up, you're going to be zapped anyway. But most times I've known from experience, they don't attack when you're in the spirit, right? Not even demons or ghosts. It always seems to be when you're on the lower frequency of the soul and you attract all this, this nonsense that comes in through the, through the unknown. Right? They, it's just another ghost attracting a ghost or worse, a demon attacking the ghost that's in you. It, that's what's feeling it or through the emotions of the, of the darker realms. Okay? And I know all about the darker realms because I, before I was Christian, I, 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 I was right into that. And these Jews with a bo magic box on their head. They're into magic, spelled M-A-J-I-C. And all about Solomon's temple being built by demons or half human or half creatures. Uh, come from the seed uh, where the, the giants and the, um, what else? Uh, even the aliens might come through that. All the Anna, Anna uh, Haki. He, he uh, had a ring. He had, Solomon had a ring. So, Solomon had a ring. A magic ring. A magic ring. See, all yeah. uh, cultish things. Joseph Smith had all that too. He had the talisman around that he had. And it's a trapped woman. So he ended up with 37 wives and Brigham Young ended up with 50 wives. Right? So... 
these are, these are uh, symbolisms of the occult. But, but um, the Latter-day Saints will justify and say that was around before the devil copied it. It was original, the original thing, you know? And then the Freemasons copied it and all of that, you know? And yet the Latter-day Saints copied the Freemason ritual to the letter and then added an exaltation and the, lumin the luminous light of God where the Freemasons, they say the luminous not light of Lucifer on the highest level, but they don't pronounce that. They, you, you'll know that when you get to the top. But but anyway, on the lower level, they're great. They're good people. My dad was one. My mate here, his dad was one. And they're part of the Lions Club and they do a lot of charity. But just like the Catholic Church, on the lower level, it's good. Good people. But on the higher level, it's corrupt. Mark of the Beast, 666, which in their Bible, it's removed for centuries. You can't even find it. Whatever that Bible they're using, uh, and it's a warning that the Pope has something to do with it. He's the Pope and he's a puppet for what's coming, ushering in an antichrist. All right. And the Mormon Church is the opposite. It's actually quite moral and clean at the top. You never hear of any petty pedophilia at the top. But you do hear it at the bottom levels, the racism, the gossip, the backbite, the slandering, because a lot of the Latter-day Saints are following blindly after these prophets and they're le uh, being led by the blind, and they're buying the way to heaven with works. And if you're not good enough, you know, just a coffee or a smoke or a drink, you, you, you're, you're, you're dirt under their feet, right? And you go to church and you've got, you stink of cigarette. I mean, it has happened. You get removed. Not all the time, but, you know, if you're not wearing a tie all the time, you've got to wear a white shirt. You try going to church wearing a blue or black shirt for months on end and you get a question. Oh, I think you're back time you change your shirt, brother. As if that was important to Jesus Christ. Yeah, it stands to keep bashing the Mormons. Yeah. You know. Oh, thank you, mate. But look, my mate is defending, defending me because he, for years... No, no, we're supposed to be talking about Yeah, we will. We're, 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 we're branching back to that. For years, my mate helped me uh, see, the, see the nonsense and all of it and how it was harming me, hurting me. Because I got kicked out of the church for a 48-hour fast, uh, didn't know I was diabetic, and I was accused of being demonic possessed seven years terminated from attending it broke my marriage and everything i was going to go and get married in the temple again. so he helped me out through transition no one else come and visit me when i went to the hospital not one of those buggers from the church ever come and visit me when i was sick on, on my uh we could call it my deathbed suicidal so i've come to understand these lives these wisdoms understandings uh, manifestations the footprints of the bible the fruits and that's what we're here to talk about today, because these are the things that come forth uh, as a Christian, as, as a spiritual person too, for that matter. And everything else is just repetition nonsense, where you don't, you're not really thinking for yourself. And then again, you're not really thinking for yourself necessarily now, because you're going into spirit, which is a pure intelligence that always existed god evolving through you and it gives pleasure to god to give him glory and for us to show the gratitude all right but so we're going to go into spirit i would let's talk yeah i think it's safe to say that 99.9 percent .9 of religious expression in the world is just kind of anthropomorphic sanctimonious hypocritical nonsense yeah and it's time we you know stood back and had a look at that yeah I can never say that word, anthemophoric. <laughs> Don't even try. No. <laughs> right. Um, so, can you speak some wisdoms, please? On what? <laughs> <laughs> he knows the camera's on, see? He goes quiet. He, mate, he, this, this guy won't shut up. But you give him a camera, mate. Stage fright. Come on, speak your mind, brother. We've got thousands of viewers out there that will want to see this. <laughs> <laughs> what a waste of life you don't get, get the message out. <laughs> Breathe through your nose. My dad would say, what a loser. But my dad's dead and gone now and he was an atheist. That's my wisdom. Breathe through your nose. Nitric oxide. Yeah. Very important. See, if my friend detects an ego sort of a, you know, seeking some type of fame and recognition, he'll crumble. I don't blame him for that because that's, because that's what a lot of people are doing. Right, I don't want anything. I don't want any other religion. I don't want anything at all. All I just want my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, a family, and helping people. All right, and to have a dignified death, uh, to go in spirit, and not to be 
like, you know, I've got one floor that I, I have. I love going to the casino because I, I spent two years in Vegas. I was a Mormon missionary and I won the, I hit the jackpot. Told the mission president about it and he, he was really peeved off about it. But that's what happens. And I had a bit of luck and then I had a bit of, I had a lot of bad luck and I lost a lot of money. And I learned my lesson. So what I'm trying to say is I don't want to be sitting in a casino when I'm 90 when I should be preparing to meet God, right? And my probation is not in the soul because we can't overcome our sins. It's in the spirit. It's just basic. The probation part is to give up your filthy, rotten, sinful soul and go into spirit. And of course, we'll slip out of it now and then and we'll sin again. But if we're truly converted Christians, we will not murder. We'll not go rob a bank, steal, lie, cheat, and that sort of thing. We won't gossip, backbite, slander, and run people down to the ground, all right? Those sort of sins. We're still going to sin. And lust is, look, you'd have to be, have your eyes closed to go around and not lust. You have to have your eyes uh, open. Uh, sorry, <laughs> what, what was the word? You'd have to have your eyes closed all day long to avoid lust, and that even then you, you wouldn't. So what it means is lust, lust without love is a cursed sin. And it's mainly, mainly in marriage, okay, or leading up to marriage. You've got to get the compatibility right, physically and spiritually. So there's, there's, it's not blind faith or naive faith in marriage. It should be the religious thing or you, you know, you'd be lucky if you can get the kiss of a woman before you marry her and you find out you're not even compatible. Then you fight and bicker for the rest of your life. It's nonsense. So if God knows that's going to work out really good, it's, it's going to be a, bless, a blessing, a marriage. God can use a happy marriage. Anyway, we're getting off the track here, but we'll get back on the subject. I have one pearl of wisdom. Yep. Concerning religion. Yep. And I'll just make. Yep, yep, yep. Still going. I thought I thought it'd gone off. Wrap it up soon, okay? Wrap it up yep, soon. Yep. yep. It won't be hard to see the irony in this. Imagine if we condense the essence of religion as we understand it. Yep and took out everything except two main tenets. Thou shalt not kill and love your enemy. Ah. What, what about if we just did those two things? Yes. Yeah. Right? Nothing more, just those two things. Mm -hmm. But that's way too simple. Well, you can't do that. That's a but really good point. That's the irony in that. So all this religion... And they're the two main tenets of it. Thou shalt not kill and love your enemy. That's the, the two books. And there's the message. That's, that's wonderful. And you've got to love yourself too, right? So if you, if you don't love yourself, how do you love others? And to love yourself is to recognise you're a spiritual being, a spirit. It's come to earth to have a physical spirit. It's not the other way around. We are here to have a, a body, right? But in our soul... We're not, we can't be perfected, and we do judge, even our enemies, and, and we say we want to forgive our enemies, but deep down we don't even forgive ourselves. So there's that going to be that bickering going on. So we do need to go into the spirit, and then we can love our enemies, right? And that's the protection, because it's pouring hot coals over them. I have enemies, I've had enemies, all right? Very serious, life-threatening situations, and I know how it works, okay? Um, soul attacking soul or you could say the, a living ghost attacking another living ghost so anyway we're going to we're going to wrap this up shortly because uh, my mate is getting used to these broadcasts and there'll be many more to come and I know many people watch these so uh, I'm going to love you and leave you and I'm going to send this shortly and I have I'll just ask my mate if he's got any last words to say in relating to wisdoms and understandings etc Breathe through your nose. <laughs> oh, yeah, they had this thing about breathing through the nose and the breath. Nitric oxide. Yeah, taking three Very long important. breaths a day and rise your gut and bring it right up here. And If you do that three times a day, it'll invigorate your health and may even give you some years extension of your life. Breathing is very important. It goes into the higher levels. So that's 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 a good wisdom, which is, which is nothing to do with really religion is it so we, we need to calm the savage beast. it's not really about what you believe it's about what you're trying to be yeah, and that's it being that's it. so the the fruit of that of whatever you're trying to be will 
show. It's as simple as it's that. It's the beingness, right? It's the beingness, not so much the doingness. Though the doingness will probably come as a result, but you're not thinking that. You're thinking to be something, and you already uh, have it all within you. The kingdom of God is within, right? The word is the word, but if you take, but you, there's every word is out there. Take everything literally, and they're the ones that will kill in the name of their God. You, you, you know. It, it says you're going to hell. And so, yeah, but that's another story, okay? Um, God is merciful, and I believe there's different levels, and there are people going to hell, and there's people that are not. And we'll be surprised who gets to heaven and who doesn't. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.